Kate Blackwell ist die absolute Herrscherin des Diamantenimperiums Krüger Brent. Ihr Vater, James McGregor, hatte lange Jahre vor dem Ersten Weltkrieg Diamanten in der Wüste Namib gefunden, darunter auch einen großen Stein, der zwar wertlos war, aber zum Symbol des Aufstiegs der jungen Firma wurde. Ihrem Vater hat Kate nicht mehr kennengelernt und auch ihre Mutter verlor sie früh. Mit 18 übernahm sie selbstbewusst die Leitung des Unternehmens und heiratete David Blackwell, den Freund ihres Vaters. Als Kate von Brad, ihrem Sekretär und Vertrauten, die Nachricht vom tödlichen Unfall ihres Mannes erhält, ist sie verzweifelt. Mit größter Intensität widmet sie sich dem inzwischen weltweiten Unternehmen und ganz besonders der Erziehung ihres einzigen Sohnes Tony, der einmal ihr Erbe antreten soll. Der Zweite Weltkrieg geht zu Ende. Entgegen dem Willen seiner Mutter studiert Tony in Paris Malerei. Aber durch bezahlte negative Kritiken erreicht Kate, dass er die Malerei aufgibt und Mary Ann, die reiche Erbin eines Elektronikkonzerns, heiratet. Tonys Glück ist nur kurz, denn bei der Geburt von Zwillingen stirbt Mary Ann. Da seine Mutter vom Risiko bei der Geburt gewusst hat, macht Tony sie für den Tod seiner Frau verantwortlich und schießt in seiner rasenden Wut auf sie. Kate erholt sich wieder, aber Tony wird wahnsinnig und in ein Privatsanatorium gebracht. Die französische Kinderfrau Solange erzieht die Zwillinge Eve und Alexandra und erkennt auch bald deren unterschiedliche Charaktere. Mit 17 kommen die Zwillinge in ein Schweizer Internat. Eve treibt es sogleich mit den jungen Kadetten und wird von der Schule relegiert, was sie jedoch ihrer Großmutter verschweigt. Brad, Vizepräsident von Krüger Brent und langjähriger Vertrauter von Kate, erzählt ihr, dass Eve rausgeworfen wurde und dass er sie für eine notorische Lügnerin hält. Kate glaubt ihm nicht. Sie hält Eve nur für clever und einfallsreich und sieht in ihr ihre Nachfolgerin. Als Kate jedoch erfährt, dass ihre Enkelin mit vielen Männern geschlafen hat und sogar mit dem alten Grafen Morier im Bett war, glaubt sie den Beteuerungen ihrer Enkelin nicht mehr und enterbt sie. Kate macht nun Alexandra zu ihrer Nachfolgerin und führt sie in die Leitung von Krüger Brent ein. Ihr größter Wunsch allerdings ist es, dass Alexandra bald heiratet und Kinder bekommt, damit die Erbfolge gesichert ist. Eve hingegen macht an der Riviera weiterhin Jagd auf Männer. Ihr gefällt ein junger Grieche, Georges Melis, den sie auch gleich auf ihr Zimmer bestellt. Doch statt mit ihr ins Bett zu gehen, schlägt er sie zusammen und nimmt auch noch wertvollen Schmuck mit. Doch dann lädt sie ihn wiederum ein und eröffnet ihm ihren Plan. Er soll sich an ihre Zwillingsschwester heranmachen und sie heiraten, um so an das große Geld heranzukommen. Eve arrangiert ein Treffen zwischen George und Alexandra. Alles klappt wie vorgesehen. Alexandra verliebt sich in George und stellt ihn ihrer Großmutter vor. George gibt sich als Sohn reicher Eltern aus. Auch Kate findet diesen Griechen sehr charmant und hat gegen eine Heirat nichts einzuwenden. Alexandra verlebt glückliche Flitterwochen. Doch George sucht heimlich Eve auf. Als sie sich ihm verweigert, schlägt er sie so zusammen, dass sie mit völlig verunstaltetem Gesicht im Krankenhaus landet. Aber die Operationen des Dr. Webster gelingen so gut, dass ihr Gesicht wieder in früherer Schönheit erstrahlt und keine Narben zurückbleiben. Dr. Harley, der Hausarzt der Blackwells, verspricht, der Familie nichts von dem Vorfall mitzuteilen, wenn George sich einer psychiatrischen Behandlung unterzieht. Dies passt genau in das Konzept von Eve. Eve! Oh, it's so good to see you. Hey, Keith Webster did a fantastic job. You're as good as new. Thank you. Oh, except for this little scar, but he's going to remove it in about a month. Oh, I'm so pleased for you. You must be good and tired of doctors by this time. Well, I'm afraid I'm not here for myself. No? It's Alexandra. Ever since she came back from her honeymoon, she's been terribly depressed. I'm afraid... I'm afraid she's suicidal. Is her husband mistreating her? No. He's been on his best behavior. Somehow with her, he's a different man. Different man? You sure about that? He's good to her. Alex told me they really love each other. Now, there, there's something else wrong with her. I remember in school, she would run off by herself and I'd find her crying for no reason at all. It really used to scare me. Dr. Harley, 
She won't go see a psychiatrist, but she will come here. She promised. Please. You've got to help her. I can't lose her. I'll do what I can. You know that. Mrs. George Mellis to see you, Doctor. Oh, hello, Alexandra. Hello, Doctor. Come sit down. I'm sorry to bother you like this. I feel all right. It's just that I don't sleep very well. Welcome to the club. Now tell me what's wrong. You think I'm some kind of hypochondriac. Alexandra, people do get ill, you know. There's nothing to be ashamed of. But I'm not sick. It's just this feeling I have. And there's no reason. Perhaps you miss the carefree single life? No, I... I love being married. I love George. He's a wonderful husband. And that's just what has me so unhappy. Well, I don't understand. I know George wants to make me happy. I, I feel like a small child he keeps trying to please. I, I find myself off in a corner crying, and I don't understand it. I've never been like this before. I... I'm ashamed to even say it. I thought of hurting myself. It's in my dreams, too. It's always the same. I'm in a boat, far out to sea. Someone keeps calling my name. Then I look at the water. And I see myself. And I'm going under the waves. I'm crazy, aren't I? You are not crazy. But I want you to have a thorough physical examination, because I have a feeling that the cause might be there. And in the meantime, I'm going to give you a prescription. I promise you, that will help. Washington Square. Ah, come right in. Thank you. Please, make yourself at home. Thank you, Doctor. Ah, uh, now. Mr. Mellis, how would you describe your past relationships with women? Like that of any other man. Normal. I enjoy women. You must have gotten angry with some, I suppose. I lost your temper. Well, I wouldn't say that. Perhaps a little irritated. They did something stupid, but no violence, never. That thing that happened was just an aberration. Well, some people need violence as a release, a, a safety valve. But you know all this, of course. I told a friend of mine that, you know, he hates prostitutes. And he had one of them in a hotel about a month ago. And she tried to get more money out of him. She'll never try that again. He beat the hell out of her. Hey, Lieutenant, the shrink's here. I wish. <laughs> hey, Doc! Doc! Lieutenant Pappas would like to see you in his office.
pretty good service, Nick. Well, you said it was important, so I called Athens person to person. And? First, tell me if I'm going through one of those patient confidentiality things again. Depends. OK, I'll take a chance. Levy? Uh, old man Mellis never had a heart attack. In fact, when the lieutenant called him, he was riding a horse. And as far as he's concerned, his son George is dead. He threw him out years ago without a dime. When the lieutenant asked him why, he hung up. So the lieutenant calls a Colonel uh, Gallopos. Yeah, no yeah. And the colonel says that George was busted for beating up prostitutes. They even tied him in with the girl whose body they found in a hotel room. The old man paid somebody off, and George got kicked out of the country. OK. Yeah, thanks, Nick. I owe you one. Hold on, Peter. This one I want to collect on. I found a girl in an alley a few months ago. And if your man is on the loose again, I want to know about it. Sorry, Nick, but I don't know a thing. See you Thursday night, huh? Excuse me. He plays chess the same way. What can you tell me about George Mellis' wife? Oh, I've looked after Alexandra and her sisters since they were born. <laughs> Ah, they're probably the most perfect set of identical twins I've ever seen. I remember one time giving some medication to Eve that was really meant for Alexandra. And even now, I can't tell them apart. Alexandra did come to see you after I called. Oh, yeah. Eve arranged it. Peter, what is it you really want to know? I'm not sure. There's something going on in that family, and it worries me. Now, when Alexandra came to see you, how do you know it was her if they're so identical? Oh, George Mellis took care of that. What he did to Eve. There's still a small red scar on her forehead. I see. And both sisters are heir to a large fortune, aren't they? Mm -hmm. It's private family business, but I suppose there's no harm telling you that uh, Eve has been disinherited. And Mellis's wife gets all of it. I suppose. A psychotic and a rich wife. Is that what's worrying you? Yes. The trouble is, I need proof before I go to the police. And if I do, I might be violating my professional ethics. Mm. It's very frustrating. Oh, Dr. Templeton, uh, Mrs. Mellis. Hello, Dr. Templeton. Mrs. Mellis, very nice of you to come. The table's going to be a few minutes. Um, Lucy, sure. can I get you a drink? Yeah. You look very well. How do you feel? Oh, you've got the wrong patient, Doctor. I feel fine, thank you. I was going to call you about George, but I didn't think it was proper. Well, I often like to talk to the family, try to get another point of view. I see. Well, uh, George is the last person in the world I thought would need a psychiatrist. He's, he's kind and loving. I couldn't ask for a better husband. Has he told you why he's seen me? That he's been under a great strain lately. His partners at the brokerage firm where he works put most of the responsibility on him. As you know, he's very conscientious. Mrs. Mellis. You seem a very happy, well-adjusted young woman, and yet I've talked to John Harley, and he's told me... There you are, darling. George. I called the house, and they told me you'd be here. Doctor. Hello. How are you? May I join you? Thank you. I don't like it. Why should he want to see Alexandra? I don't know. But if she hadn't left a message for what me... What does she look like? She looks incredible. Just like you. You know, I saw Harley. I had dark circles under my eyes. I looked terrible. A woman close to suicide. And then the real Alexandra shows up looking like a movie star. I don't like it. It's getting messy, George. We can't wait any longer. It's time. I'm ready. Yes? I hope I'm not disturbing you, Eve. It's Keith Webster. I'm sorry, I can't talk to you right now. I was just going out the door. I'll only be a minute. I have tickets for the theater for tomorrow night, and I was wondering... Sorry. 
I'm busy. I know how you like horses, and the horse show is at the garden next week. I could get tickets for that. I'm going to be out of town. I'll have to run. It didn't take him much time to get back into action. Did it? But don't worry, my angel. As soon as I take over my wife's inheritance, you won't have to turn tricks for anybody. Wish me luck. Just the two of us, darling. A weekend up at Dark Harbor alone. We'll get rid of the servants. It will be like another honeymoon. I wish I were in your condition, Kate. I'm much more than a patient, John. Just tell me what's wrong with me. Oh, age, mostly. A little hardening of the arteries and a few other small infirmities that go along with it. So, what are we going to do to stop these bloody, silly, dizzy spells? We have medication for that. When are you going to retire? When I have a great-grandson to take over my company. John, do you know one of the big disappointments in my life, John? Eve. I cared for her so much, I wanted to give her the world. She never gave a damn about anybody but herself. Oh, you're wrong, Kate. She cares a good deal for you. Bloody hell, she does. I can prove it. A few months ago, she had a terrible accident. Almost died. You never told me. I couldn't. She made me promise not to. Didn't want to worry you. John Harley, my annual checkup. Are you all right? He says I'm fine. He said you had a terrible accident. Yes? That you were near death. But you would not allow him to tell me because you didn't want me to worry. Yes, Grant. That would indicate certain things to me. That caring still existed between us. I never stop caring. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I was an old fool. I, I was much too hard on you. I couldn't bear it if anything happened to you. I couldn't. I'm all right, Grant. We'll make a fresh... We'll make a fresh start. That's what we'll do. <laughs> oh. I was like my father. I was... Addictive and stubborn. I'll make amends. First thing I'll do is put you back in my well. Just you and your sister. Just the two of us, darling. A weekend up at Dark Harbor alone. waiting at Gilkey Harbor. Take it to Dark Harbor. Come in from the eastern end so you won't be seen. Tie the launch to the Niliraga. And then take your bride for a moonlight sail. When you get rid of the body, 
Leave the Niliraga adrift and take the launch back to the mainland. When you get back to the mainland, use the Lincolnville Ferry to Dark Harbor. Take a taxi to the house. Use some excuse to get the driver to go in with you so you'll both see she's missing and that the Niliraga has gone from the dock. Call the police and say you can't find your wife. And neither will they, because the tide will take the body out to sea. An eminent doctor will be able to testify that she was a probable suicide. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. George, I can't believe it. Grandmother went to see Eve. She's taken her back. She's getting her inheritance and everything. How do you suppose that happened? Oh, I don't know. I don't care. Now she and I will share everything. I never wanted it any other way. How lovely for your sister. I'm glad for you both. I didn't expect you here so early. I wanted to surprise you. Just the two of us, sailing in the uh, moonlight. Come on, come on. Change it to something and we'll go out. You made dinner for us. Oh, boy. Oh, thanks a lot. I'm just kidding. Hurry up. Come on. OK. Sedate her, she'll be all right for a while. Poor Alex. She hasn't stopped crying. Why? Why would anyone want to kill him? It must have been a robbery. Dr. Temple. This is Nellis of Caldwell Ascot's. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Mrs. Blackwell, Alexandra's sister Eve, and uh, Grand Rogers. I thought it might be helpful if I had a talk with the granddaughter. 
Oh, Doctor, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I know you must be very tired of hearing this, but I really can't tell you and your sister apart. It really doesn't help me to do anything for Alex. She's devastated. You wouldn't be able to tell us anything, would you? Was he afraid of anyone? Did he ever say anything? The police have already asked me. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to help. Yeah, yeah, and they called me as well. What I don't understand is why the police in New York should become interested in this case. I really don't know. But I was his doctor, and the police are very involved. In fact, Lieutenant Pappas from Homicide is flying up to Maine this morning. No one can figure how Malice got on the island. The boat operator and the man who runs the airport swears they never saw him that night. How about a private boat? No, we checked all the boat people in the area. Silch. You uh, <clears throat> talked to his wife, like you said? Well, they were coming up here for a weekend together. The ticket people at LaGuardia saw her check in. Then she missed the plane. Hey, Lieutenant. We got blood stains beneath the railing. You mind if I take this home? For a lab test. And the clothes from the house. Mellows was killed on the boat and his body was thrown overboard. The murderer thought that the tide would take it to China. Is that an educated guess? After the lab test told me that the blood stains on the rail were his, it is educated. You're holding out on me, friend. Mellows was your patient. If he wasn't talking about his mother, he must have been talking about his wife. Come on now, Nick. That's privileged information. Even if he did, so what? So she is number one, two, and three on my list of suspects. What are you, nuts? Well, she rings as nuts. Alexandra Mellis could not have killed her husband. She had a motive. She says she was on her way up to Maine when she gets a call at LaGuardia from her sister to meet her right away back here in the city. Only the sister never shows up. And Alexandra never gets to Maine. And what did her sister say? These are twins, Doc. One inhales and the other exhales. One lies and the other one says it's the truth. Sure, Eve called her. But Alexandra goes to the wrong place. Bah! Doesn't sound like you got much of a kiss there, Nick. Well, how come the servants got the weekend off? Somehow she got to that island. She wanted him up there alone with no witnesses. You still haven't told me what the motive is. The one you gave me. Me? Yes, you. Mellis liked to beat up on women. He did a number on her and she couldn't get a divorce. Why should he give her one? An heiress and a pauper? She had no choice. She had to kill him. Hey, 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 hey. Who's the analyst there, huh? Me or you? Oh, very <laughs> clever, very clever, and very evasive. Now, you tell me what you and Alexander were talking about at lunch ten days ago. Hmm? Was she tense? Hysterical? Angry? Well, I hate to do this to you, Nick, but I've never seen a more composed, well-adjusted, young lady in all my life. She's frankly just the kind of young woman I'd very much like to get to know. Well, that explains this hosing that I'm getting. I saw Dr. John Harley this morning. According to him, Alexander Mellis was threatening to commit suicide. John, glad you could come by. Well, the message said important. I've been thinking about the beating Mellis gave Eve Blackwell. Oh, yes? Well, it was never reported to the police. And now, with his murder and everything, I wonder if I shouldn't tell them about it. You must do whatever you think best, Key. I just don't want to do anything to embarrass Eve Blackwell. She's a very special person. Uh, yes, she is. <clears throat> My problem is, if the police do find out, they could bring me before the hospital board. Well, I don't see how the police could find out. I mean, Eve would never mention it. After all, <laughs> she's very grateful to you. Except for that one little scar, why you'd never know that she'd been disfigured. What little scar? Thank you. The one on her forehead. She told me that you were going to remove it in a month or two. When did you last see Eve? Oh, a couple of weeks ago. She came in to discuss a problem her sister was having. And uh, except for that one little scar, I still couldn't have told them apart when Alexandra came in the next day. Mm. Mm. I have to go, babe. Have an audition. Ah. <laughs> Will I see you tomorrow? There's a chance. Oh. Give me a call. You really like the watch, don't you? Love your taste. Rory. Mm. 
Hi. Hello, Miss Blackwell. I, I was in the neighborhood and thought I'd drop this off. Come in, Dr. Webster. Bye. Good luck with the audition. Thanks, babe. I don't like surprises, Doctor. I'm sorry, but it's quite important. Would you look at this, please? What is it? Please, look. Why are you showing me this? Well, you remember, it was taken right after the final bandages came out. Of course I remember. There is no scar on your forehead. No red little scar. John Harley came to see me. I know about your visit and about your sister consulting him. You seem to have developed a scar. While your sister's face, of course, is completely clear. I don't know what you're thinking, but whatever it is, you're wasting my time. I was playing a little joke on my sister. We've always done that with one another. I'm sorry to have bothered you. I felt I should talk with you before I went to the police. What do they have to do with me? You see, I'll be open to a charge of professional misconduct if I don't report what happened between you and George Mellis. And there's the problem of the scar. I don't understand it, but I'm sure you can explain it to the police. It's his murder that's changed everything. I know they'll ask so many questions. Where were you when he was murdered? Why would Mellis attack you in that way? I'm so sorry. What do you want? Money? Please. Then what? What do you want? I like you so very much, Eve. I'd hate for anything bad to happen to you. Nothing bad is going to happen, Keith. I haven't done anything wrong. None of this has anything to do with George Mellis's murder. If you do like me, then you won't say anything about this. I'd like to leave. I really would. But they're holding the coroner's inquest Saturday. I'm a physician. It's my duty to testify and tell everything I know. No. No. You don't have to say anything. But I do. Huh? I've taken a note. There's only one thing in the world that can prevent me from doing that. Yes? If we were married, you know, a husband can't be forced to testify against his wife. Don't touch me. Congratulations, Mrs. Webster. Mr. Webster, thank you. Have a nice trip. Hmm. Morning. You wish to see me? Yes, ma'am. Please sit down. After that walk, I could use a rest. <laughs> Lieutenant, let's just get to the point. I'd appreciate it. Uh, there's an inquest on George Mellis tomorrow, and I have reason to believe that his widow is involved. I don't believe it. Mellis is a fortune hunter and a psychotic. After he worked over a couple of times, she asked for divorce. He refused. So she decided to kill him. I knew George Mellis. He was never the man you said. He was worse. Anyway, I started to look around for evidence to pin it on your granddaughter. Now, we picked up a lead at a place called uh, Gilkey Harbor at 5.30 in the afternoon of the day that Mellis was killed. A woman rented a motor launch there and said that a friend would pick it up later. She paid cash, but she had to sign a rental slip. The name she used was Solange Duna. We showed the attendant there a picture of Alexandra. Now, she was pretty sure that it was her, except that the woman with the boat was a brunette. Then it wasn't her. She's her. She wore a wig. It's impossible that Alexander killed her husband. Even the idea is preposterous. I agree with you. Thank you very much. Now, if you'll go... It was her sister, Eve. Alexandra never got out of New York. 
Now, I found witnesses who saw her. So it had to be Eve who rented a second boat up along the coast. That's how she got to Dark Harbor. She used the same name, Solange Duna. Now, I can place her in Maine, but now I got to find Eve's motive. Now, the people at her place told me that George Mellis was a frequent visitor there. One night, he almost beat her to death. They had to rush her to the hospital. Did you know that, Mrs. Blackwell? No. Now, Eve's alibi is that she was in Washington on that day. Now, I don't believe she ever got there. Instead, she disguised herself with a wig and took a commercial jet up to Maine. Now, she killed Mellis, threw the body overboard, took the yacht back to the island, and then towed the second launch back to the rental dock, which was closed for the night. What I need now is some hard evidence. Now, you know your granddaughter better than anyone else in the world, Mrs. Blackwell. If you could just tell me anything, it could be helpful. I think I can give you some information for the inquest. On the day George Millis was murdered, my granddaughter Eve and I were in Washington together. I believe that Mr. Rogers will bear witness to that. Is that true, Mr. Rogers? Yes. Yes, yes it is. Alexandra. It was good of you to come. I'm sorry. All I can give you is moral support. I could use it. The inquest didn't do much good, did it? They still don't know anything. What are your plans now? My sister wants me to go away with her. Oh, I see. Is there anything wrong with that? No, of course not. I just thought it might be helpful if we talked. May I call you in the city? I think I can count on you. Yes. Good. No way around it. It had to happen. What had to happen? Ooh, what cute little wrinkles. You're getting to be an old lady. I'm 25 years old. <laughs> All right. You've still got a few years left yet. Hello, darling. Did you have a nice afternoon? It's terrible. I've been doing a lot of thinking about us, Eve, dear. So have I. Since I won't give you a divorce and you're too frightened to get one, I think it's time your family were told we're married. I never mind about all that. Get rid of these wrinkles. What wrinkles? These. <laughs> Those are laugh lines, darling. They're cute. I love them. I hate them. Get them off. What Eve, dearest, then? They make me look old. You can do it, can't you? It is what you do for a living. Come here. If it'll make you happy. Take these off, too, while you're at it. I'll do what I can. Now, I have a wonderful surprise for dinner. And this, my love, is the Holbein. <sighs> it's magnificent. It's my son's favorite. He used to sketch from it as a boy. Good evening, doctor. Good evening, Mrs. Blackwell. I've just been admiring your collection. Is that why you're here every evening? I was under the impression it had something to do with Alexandra. Grand. Your impression's correct. Do you know anything about business? Not very much, I'm afraid. Are you incorporated? No. Bloody hell. You certainly don't know anything about business. You need a good tax man. I'll set up an appointment for you. Thank you, Mrs. Blackwell, but I'm doing just fine. My husband was a stubborn man, too. You invite him to dinner. I'll talk some sense into him. Rory? How are you, darling? Nothing's wrong. 
wrong. I'm just sleepy. I'm sorry. I'm at this medical convention. I, I know. I can't help it. I'll be back in a week. I miss you, too. Rory? Of course I believe you. I'm sorry. I have to go to sleep now. Bye-bye. That was Alex. She calls me constantly. She's devoted to you. We all are. How are you feeling, my dearest? Just tell me when all of this is coming off. Soon now. Very soon. I will not allow myself to die until I'm ready. That's very kind of you, I'm sure. Mm. No, no. With you, death takes a holiday. you to repeat that. I'll deny it. Ah, nothing wrong with you. Brad, I can't leave yet. I can't. There's no real heir to take over the future of Kruger Brent. Well, it's in the hands of Alexander and her doctor has not let them marry and give us a future. Perfect. Would you like some chicken or ham or roast beef? Yes, please. Okay, I'll give you this piece here. Here you go. Thank you. I think we can safely say that Kate had a wonderful birthday party. Mm -hmm. I thought she looked absolutely radiant, didn't you? Mm. She always has. I suppose she always will. Are you going to your town tomorrow? Uh, yeah, but I didn't want to take my car. Are you going? Yeah, I'll have to lunch. Yeah, what's your car? Father, aren't you going to eat anything? Yes. That sounds nice. Thank you. I think it's better if we just leave him alone, don't you? We'll go. Yes, please. Thank you. Want biscuits, darling? If I should want another biscuit, I'll let you know. Can I be excused, Mommy? Can I go sailing now? It's raining outside, son. You'll have to wait till it clears up. Good morning, Grant. It was a great birthday party. Was it? I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I enjoyed the way you played the piano very much, Robert. You were wonderful. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning Kate. Kate. Now, do I understand that Robert's making A's? All A's? Top of his class. Well, when he's old enough, you should really send him to the Wharton School. It's quite the best, and they'll do a fine job with him. <laughs> My dear sweet Kate, don't you ever give up? Robert's going to do exactly what he wants to do. He has a remarkable musical talent, and he wants to be a classical musician. Indeed. And I shall certainly try to help him, of course. He's going to choose his own life, Kate. I wouldn't dream of interfering. In fact, maybe I can help. How's that? Well, I know a man who is a friend of the conductor of the New York Philharmonic. Now, we'll arrange a musical recital and we'll let him judge Robert's obvious musical talent. Your granny loves you very much, Robert. Your granny wants the very best for you. I have so much to learn about people. I'm 
about the world and about life. You can control your destiny, you know. How? Oh. How? Oh, well, it's it's very much like a game. It's like a game, and it's well worth the playing if you can just learn to play it like a master. Many, many years ago, Robert, your great no, your your great great grandfather left his home in Scotland. He went out to make his money. And he said, if I can learn to play this game called life like a master, then I will 